Hello friends, hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm taking a little bit closer look at noiseless AI, which is, as the name implies, AI-based noise reduction. I've been kind of running it through some tests, checking it on lots of different photos, and I wanted to make this video kind of show you what I'm finding and how it's kind of working for me. So I'm gonna run through a few different photos and just kind of show the tool in action. This first one, as you can see, is a uh, just a neon sign, lower lights, ISO 1000. And I've already run the noise reduction. As you can see on the right-hand side, um, it, it recommended low, but I went ahead and went with middle. So it has you, uh, gives you these basic th uh, three different options, low, middle, and high. And it does say noiseless raw when it's a raw file. Otherwise, it'll say noiseless AI. That is the actual name of the tool. Now, if I come up here and show you the sky, uh, let me click the before. You can see it's it's you know fair amount of noise, and the after honestly looks pretty good. It's pretty cleaned up, which I like. If I come in here and look at like let's say this A on the sign, and again you can see the noise there before, and there it is now. And I don't feel like maybe it's slightly softer around some of these edges. Uh, let me see here. Let me zoom in to 200. Like maybe around these uh, edges where like the neon is kind of going into the sign, maybe it's a little bit softer, but it's not a massive, massive difference. And then down here, kind of like between these two different parts of the sign, if you look at the before, there it is, you know, reasonable amount of noise for ISO 1000 and after. I think it looks pretty good and I don't feel like I've sacrificed really anything in terms of detail, loss, things like that. Speaking of which, you've got these various sliders here. An observation is that when I've been using this tool, regardless of whether I click low or middle or high, all four of these sliders stay the same. And um, when I've clicked something, and let's say I want to adjust luminosity or color denoise, they default to 50. Seems like regardless of which of these three options I choose, even when I move those sliders, I don't see anything happening to the photo. Maybe my eyes are getting really old. I don't know, but I'm not really noticing anything. Um, I'm noticing some slight, very slight differences when I change detail or sharpness. And we're going to look at those. So like this right here where it says, sorry, you can see that um, I'm going to go ahead and just move details. And what I generally find with this is that I get a little bit of noise back into the image. And so I'm really not using that very much. Now it's pretty minor here, but if I reset that, I don't know if you can tell up here, like in some of those colors, let me do that again to a hundred. Seems a little bit noisier. And then when I reset it, it seems a little bit softer. So it seems to be introducing a little bit more noise. And then if I add the sharpness, um, what I'm noticing here is around the edges where it's really bright, where the cursive writing is on the sign. There it is. You can see it's a little bit more like contrast or something along those edges. And that's at sharpness of 100. And I'll default back to 30. And there it is. So I'm honestly not using any of these four sliders very much at all. I'm pretty much picking low, medium, and high. And depending on the image, it's actually working pretty well for me. Um, in this case, it recommended low. I went with middle. I like the results, to be honest, and I think it's done a really good job of cleaning up the noise. It's just these other sliders where I'm not finding so much use of. Now, I'm gonna show you a few more images. Okay, so this is a portrait shot at ISO 4000. And let me just zoom in here and give you a look. It recommended middle, and that is what I chose. I do notice that the tool is kind of slow, to be honest. It takes a little bit of time. Now, once you've picked a setting, low, middle, or high, and it's there, if you change to a different one, if I change from middle to high, for example, it's quite a bit quicker. I guess because a bit of the calculations are uh, done already. But um, overall, the tool is a little bit slow in my opinion. So um, there it is before. If you look at that wall behind them, you can see quite a bit of a noise there. And also like on their foreheads and all that. And then afterwards, I mean, it looks pretty good. It's not perfect up here. It seems like, I don't know if that's like a little bit of a weird kind of swirly pattern where it hasn't gotten everything out, but at higher ISOs, I'm seeing a little bit of that. Um, overall, I mean, I think their skin looks pretty good. There it is before, and there it is now. And I think generally speaking, it's done a pretty good job. And if I'm using Luminar Neo as my base or my host product, my photos are in there already, it makes a lot of sense just to take advantage of Noiseless AI right there in your workflow, which is one of the ways that I'm using it. If I'm in Luminar Neo and that's where my catalog is and that's where my photos are, and I do have catalog and photos in Luminar Neo, 
it's super quick and super easy just to pop right into noiseless uh, raw and or noiseless AI and just take advantage of that. And honestly, I back up and using middle, I mean, honestly, it looks pretty darn good. It's just when you're zoomed in at these higher ISOs where I see a little bit of artifacts, I'm gonna go get another example and show you a different result. Okay, here's another example, and this is ISO 5000, just an old uh, vintage camera shot in my office. Let me zoom in and show you how the noise reduction has worked here. It recommended middle, I went ahead and used middle. And if I show you the before, you can see quite a bit of noise there on the lens and around the outside of it and that sort of thing on the glass itself. And afterwards, it looks pretty clean overall. And now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to high. And there you go, I mean, that was only a couple of seconds and I still think that looks quite good. I mean, there's the before and the after. Now I want to look at the background as well. Now this background is very plain. I'm not seeing the same kind of stuff that I saw in that portrait. And um, I think that, that looks nice, to be honest. So there it is before and afterwards, even at a higher ISO of 5,000, I'm not really seeing that. So I like the overall result here. I'm quite pleased with it. And I want to show you one more example. Okay, so this image also shot in my office, different day, different time and all that. This is ISO 25,600. To be clear, I would probably never shoot at that ISO, but took an image like this just so I could test denoising on it. And in this case, um, it recommended high. And of course I went with high because that's an incredibly high ISO. And so if I zoom in a little bit, um, let me show you the before. You can see a substantial amount of noise all around the image. I mean, it's just really, really noisy, as you would expect at ISO 25,600. And afterwards, I mean, it's done an okay job. It's not an amazing job. I would say it doesn't look great, but it certainly looks better than it did. Again, super noisy, not as noisy. But if you look over here, like I'm talking about these higher ISOs, some of the stuff in the background just looks a little splotchy to me. It doesn't look ideal. And I find with these higher ISOs and lower light, because this, even though it's in my office, just like the last camera, camera was a photo of the camera. That one was ISO 5000, but it was brighter in my office. This was a little bit darker in my office and higher ISO. And I feel like I'm getting a little bit, I don't know, just a less attractive background. Doesn't seem as smooth. That's what it looked like before. Tons of, tons of noise as to be expected, like I said. And there it is. Noise, you know, generally gone and under control, but it just doesn't look great. And if I back up, it also doesn't really look great even backed up. Uh, there it is with all the noise and without it, it still looks a little smudgy kind of, I don't know what the pattern is called, but it just doesn't look great. So what I'm finding is low to mid ISO looks great. Overall, I'm pleased with it. And if I'm in the workflow of Luminar, if that's my base, my host app, and I've got my raw files there and all that, I can just go straight into it and take care of noise. Fantastic. I think that's awesome and it's working well. And in decent light, um, even up to a little bit higher ISO, like that first camera shot, ISO 5000, but in decent light, it actually did a really good job. It's just when it gets a lower light and higher elevated ISO, in this case, a really high ISO, 25,000, but I've also done some tests with like ISO 10,000 and things like that. And it's looking okay, it's not looking that great. So I think for me, the way it's working is low to medium ISO with not incredibly dark sort of setup or environment, I should say. Uh, it's working pretty well. Just when it starts to get darker and darker and the ISO gets really high, maybe over 5,000 or something. I haven't tested it at every ISO setting, but when it gets a little bit higher, um, I start to see, I would say, less optimal results. So massive time saver if you already operate in Luminar Neo. And if you're like me, I, like I don't want to shoot at high ISOs. I, I only go to ISO, you know, several thousand if I really desperately have to, or if I'm taking shots because I want to test software like this. Generally speaking, like if I'm shooting street shots and things like that, ISO 2000 maybe, maybe 3200 tops and those are cleaning up nicely. So for me, it works really well in terms of how I use uh, or how I take photos and how I wanna reduce noise in Luminar Neo. It's just possibly gonna depend, I think, on how you shoot, what ISO you shoot, and what subject matter you're shooting in terms of are you shooting really deep, dark night skies at incredibly elevated ISOs? you might struggle to get really good noise reduction out of that. Your mileage may vary. These are just the experiences I'm having so far. It is version one of the tool. It's obviously only gonna get better. 
And while they did have Noiseless in the past as a separate standalone product in their creative kit, I don't really know that other than the name, if anything really came from that into this product because there were years where they didn't really talk about, make, update, or do anything with Noiseless. And then when they came out with Noiseless AI, I considered a brand new product, even though they technically had a noise reduction specific product in the past. I just have no idea if it shares any common DNA other than the name and the idea of what it does. I don't know. I don't write software. The point is, for me, in some situations, and those situations are the type that I tend to shoot the most, it's working really well. In some more extreme situations, it's working okay, but not great. In my experience, that's my finding so far. May or may not be useful to you. I just wanted to kind of walk through and give you some examples of how it's working for you and then um, kind of share my findings. So thank you for watching, my friends. Appreciate it. Hope you're doing well. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer. And until I see you next time, my friends, take care and adios.